close that. Observer directory over here, and I'm going to go here. And notice there's a, you know, you'll notice a new subfolder or, or directory called inetpub, a uh, subdirectory from your root directory. And that's created when you install IIS, and that's where your F, both your FTP and your website would be hosted. So FTP root would be here, and here's where you'd place your FTP files. And we'll throw some files in here. Um... make some files here. And that's just like when you went, you remember from the root directory in, in Linux or Unix, uh, Ubuntu, we went from var www, and then we had a, in www, we had our web directories. Or you have your user's home directory for FTP. Here's our web directory, and here is where our default document is. And again, let me... Let me go ahead and enable viewing file extensions here. Uncheck that, uncheck that, yes, yes. And this will, won't want to hide file extensions for known fault types. But you can see that that was a default document. Um, I'm going to create really quickly just a default HTML page. And we'll call this index.html. Remember that was our first, our preferred page in this directory. And I'm going to go here. And on the DACL, if I look at iUsers, notice it has read and execute by default. It's inheriting that from the parent, but again, it would need that permission in order for somebody to access our website anonymously. So I'm going to go ahead and open this with Notepad. And let's see. Let me do this. Just use a plain text editor and let's go to I. And I know pub and let me do the root. And let's stick with ANSI. Let's go here. Up in this netpad, we'll just make a real simple web page real quick. A little closing tag. Title, title, head and head. Use a hexadecimal value for black there, and hexadecimal value for white. And let's go ahead and Add a third R there for dramatic effects. And then let me close that. Alright, just a real simple web page. I mean, we could do something a lot nicer on front page or Dreamweaver, but 
that kind of give us our web page there. And then now I'm going to look at this from a local file system level, and that's what it looks like. But that's not actually going through our web server. Through our web server, what we want to do to test this out is let's open up our web browser, and we're going to type in HTTP, and you could use the loopback address one two seven zero zero one, or you could just type in localhost. And let's we'll have that secure. We'll just turn off the automatic phishing filter. And now notice I'm going through the loopback, so, and it's HTTP, so I'm actually going through Internet Information Services, and this is what I would see on you know, from any other client that was viewing this web page to my web server. And optionally I could just say localhost. Okay. Now let's see, let's go ahead and close that and let's load this across the network from our, let's log on our Vista workstation here. And we'll take a look at our Internet Information Services web server from the client or workstation side. And we just have a simple HTML page. No fancy active server pages or CGI going on or anything like that. No PHP yet, but so make sure that our, our web server has been set up properly. So I'm going to go ahead and launch Internet Explorer. And there are two ways to do this. I don't want to go out to the web, but I could type in the IP address or the host name of my server. So in this case, 192.168.100.100. And there it is down there. And that's the IP address of Sarah. And we'll turn off automatic phishing filter. But there's our web page. So again, IS is functioning. It's serving out our web page via the anonymous iUser account, IUSR account, um, across the network. Could be intranet or could be internet. Could you know could be the a public internet address. And again, synonymous with a domain name, in this case the host name of my web server, but I'm on an intranet right now, but if I were on the internet, that would simply be the domain name. And then my DNS server would point that HTTP request um, report 80 to the appropriate hosts. So, be able to resolve the host name to IP.